Good morning, girls. How are you all? Fine. Today, uh, I'll show you the genetic crosses. Yes, girls, I'm also fine, but I'm missing you all. I miss my school, my class, and also my lovely students. I hope you are studying well. You wrote all the notes. And today, I'm going to explain the genetic crosses. And this genetic crosses, uh, I'll show this whole crosses by sharing the screen. And if you uh, that look at the screen, you will be seeing that this phase you wrote, right? There are two ways where I can show you that uh, genetic crosses. And see this, uh, look at. First, our first question is show a cross between homozygous red and Homozygous white flower. Homozygous red, they have given you the genotype capital R. By uh, looking this uh, that uh, letter, you can understand. Capital letter means dominant characteristics, right? Now, and then uh, that uh, recessive small letter means recessive characteristics. So this red flower hmm, will be the red phenotype. The color of the flower red will be present in heterozygous condition also, homozygous condition also. And the white flower will come only uh, that uh, the time uh, that when there will be no dominant allele. Now look, look at the arrow. First, this is the, you know, way, this is the way we are going to show the crosses. See, the parents, male and female. So parental phenotype, red and white. And you can ask means that the, how could we know that who is male and who is female? This you can do by yourself. This isn't just example. And parental genotype, capital R, capital R, small r, small r. Please uh, follow my arrow. Now look at the gamut. They, these are the two gamuts, right? Here, capital R, capital R, small r, small r. Now this capital R and this small r will give you one genotype, capital R, small r. And here this one will give you again capital R, small r. So look at the genotype of F1 of screen. So F1 genotype all will be heterozygous and phenotype will be red. 100, 100% the phenotypic F1 phenotypic ratio will be 100% red and genotypic ratio will be 100% heterozygous uh, red, right? But look at their palette. One was homozygous red, one was homozygous white, but their cross is 100% heterozygous red. In means this kind of parent will not get any uh, that uh, white color flower. So this is the cross, first cross. Now. This is, the, this is your F1 of the spring. And if you are going down, look at our second crosses. In this question, they are asking you, show a cross between two heterozygous red flower or heterozygous red flowers. It means F1 of the spring. Your parents, again, the parental phenotype, red, and the genotype is capital R, smaller. So the gametes, look at the gamete formation. We have separated this. And now again, look, this <coughs> capital R, capital R. Of course, this is homozygous dominant. And the F1 phenotype is red. Look at the second one, capital R, small r. You can understand the cross, right girls? And this is heterozygous red. And this also, this is small r, and this capital R will give you the heterozygous red. And this is small r, small r will give you white. So here you are getting three red, one white. It means 75% red, 25% white. But if you are considering the genotype, 25% will be homozygous dominant, 50% will be heterozygous, 25% will be homozygous recessive do you have any question regarding these two crosses girls i need your feedback well miss can you explain again yeah sure uh that first one you understood right homozygous uh, uh, dominant and homozygous yes. recessive the offspring all will be heterozygous 
And now if you are crossing these two heterozygous, look, this capital R is smaller, capital R is smaller. We are crossing and organisms are becoming like that. Look at this cross. I'll show you one more cross, same, uh, same diagram. I'll show you in uh, a Punnett square. Uh, just uh, look this one. Now look, this same cross you can do in Punnett square also. Look, capital R smaller, small r smaller. So if you are crossing, look. Okay, this I'm coming back, but go back the one you are asking. So whenever you are crossing this two heterozygous organism, you are always getting three to one ratio. Girls, remember, there are a few rules of the genetics. First, if you cross homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive, offspring will be 100% heterozygous and phenotype will be dominant allele. Uh, the characteristics they are consuming, that characteristics, right? Homozygous dominant red flower, homozygous recessive white flower. If they crosses together, all the offspring will be heterozygous red. And if you are crossing two heterozygous red flower, you will get 75% red flower, 25% white flower, three is to one ratio, always. Now, uh, the next, show the crosses between heterozygous red flower, it means F1 of the spring, with the homozygous white flower, like a small r, smaller, the white flower, because white color is recessive. So in presence of dominant allele, the white color will not express. That's why they have to be recessive. So small r, small r, if you are crossing this, you will get, look at this cross, capital R, smaller, heterozygous red, this capital R, smaller, heterozygous red, this is small r, small r, homozygous, recessive, white. So this is also homozygous, recessive, white. So see the white color is coming in absence of capital R, where if the capital R is present, the color will be red. And in this type of cross, we are getting two is two, one is to one, right? If you simplify the ratio, one is to one. It means 50% dominant, 50% recessive, 50% red, 50% white. This will be the phenotypic ratio, genotypic ratio, both is one is to one. So the same cross, if I'm showing you the Punnett square, look, capital R smaller, smaller, smaller. So this capital R and this is smaller, look, and the phenotype is red. This capital R, uh, sorry, this is small r and this is smaller, white. Again, this capital R, this R will be red. This is smaller, smaller, will be white. Now, is it clear, girls? Now, co-dominance, I will explain later. Before that, I want to show you one more cross in whiteboard. Everyone, uh, just look at the whiteboard. I will uh, give you one more question. So, girls, I told you that uh, three, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, rules are of our Inheritance, when homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive are crossing, they will give you 100% heterozygous offspring. When uh, this uh, heter two heterozygous offspring are crosses, they will give you 3 to 1 ratio. And when uh, heterozygous will crosses with homozygous recessive, they will give you 1 to 1 ratio. Uh, just a minute, let me write the question. Now, our question is, show, show a cross between a homozygous. If you want, you can write in your copy also, homozygous tall plant and this question, ma'am. Homozygous tall plant and the genotype is, if you want to write, you can write in your copy book. Yeah. Homozygous tall plant and huh? homozygous dwarf plant. Miss, we'll write this down. If you want, or if you want to understand, if you're thinking understanding is enough, this up to you, you can. Dwarf tea plant. Or you can keep the screenshot, whatever you feel. Now, in this cross, now what is our 
parental phenotype? Al Amma. Parental phenotype. Parental phenotype, one is tall. And one is short. Right. Now, what is genotype? If I'm showing you the genotype, the tall is e -T and capital then T, T, capital yeah, T, and right? Then, yes, and then small two small t. Good. See, you are understanding. Now, what will be gamut? It will be T, capital T, capital small t, Excellent. and then small t. Excellent. So it means the crosses you can understand. Now, now the gamut will be capital T, one, and another one capital T. And this will be small t, one, and another one will be small t. I can draw a circle. This is one, this is one. See, exactly the way we, I showed you the cross, we can show here also. Now, again, I need to come back to this. Uh, what is the gamut you understand? Now I need to uh, draw the crosses. So if I'm showing you the crosses, this one, I will draw the line. This one and this one, right girls? Yes, yeah, so it will be and, then, and small t. Yes, and so this one, let me draw the line first, this one and then this one. Again, after that, this one, with this one and now this one with a small t again now if i'm showing you the text here now you will tell me the answer here t capital t and small t here will be all of them capital t Capital See, here will be capital T, T and small T, T, right? And this yeah. one will be, here will be, this will be. Capital T and small Capital T, T again, T. capital T, and small, small T. T. And then here again, capital T. Capital T and small T. Capital T, small T. And small T. Again, and here then it will be capital T, 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 T and small, small T. T. Now. Look at the uh, spotlight. This is the gamut. And look at this is the F1 genotype. And all are heterozygous tall. And what will be the phenotype, girls? This all will be tall, right? Due to the presence yes. of this dominant allele. Got it? Follow the yeah. spotlight. Now, so can I tell all the plants will be heterozygous tall and phenotypic ratio is 100% tall plant? Yes, miss. Right, girls? So this is one cross. Now, if I want to change it, this one, if I want to change it, instead of this, if uh, I want to do this, uh, that cross again, uh, so here, uh, that homozygous tall plant, instead of this, if I am telling you the show the crosses between F1 generation, next question, if I'm telling you, Huh, uh, that just like that. Show the crosses. Show the crosses between between F one generation. You are seeing my whiteboard, right? Yes. Now you have to cross. Now your gamut is 
this two, right? This one and this one, right girls? <coughs> yes, miss. Now I will show you next phase. Let me go to the next phase. No. Where I am. Hmm. So I need to erase this. Better to clear, right? Shall I clear? Do you need this again? I Does took I a screenshot to... mess. Yeah, shall I clear or you need you need more time to write this? I'm going to do my second cross, girls. Yes, means you can wrap. Okay. Yes. Now uh <coughs> now here the text I'll show you again. So what is my genotype and my So here will be look at the genotype Genotype if I'm showing this is uh, that uh, phenotype, you know, tall, tall, right? So one is capital T, small t. So we are crossing capital T, small t. So what is our gamut? T and then small t. Capital T and then small t. Yes. Our gamut will be capital T1, uh, small t. Again, here will be capital T, small t. So I will draw the circle to show you the gamut properly. This is very important girls. In this genetic cross, if you don't understand, it will be a problem. Now, look. Now I need to draw this one. Look. This one and this one. And this one. This one. Again, this one. The last one. With this one, right? Yes. Yes. And now, again, this small t. With the capital with T. With capital T. Small t. With the small, small t. t. Now, if I'm showing you the text, look, girls, this one will be tall. Capital T, capital T, right? Capital. And this one will be capital T, small t. Small After t, that, and then... this one will be capital T, small t. Small and t. this one, this one will be small t, small t. Yeah, small small t. t, small t. Now, look. Understood? So, look yeah. at now the spotlight. Look, this capital T capital is homozygous dominant. This is heterozygous. This is homozygous recessive. So, what will be the phenotypic ratio, girls? This is Three tall. To one. This is tall. This is tall. This is dwarf. So, 75% tall and 25 person short got it is it clear girls yes yes miss. now i'll show you how to do the punnett square i need to clear all my drawing and now i want to miss can you tell the difference between homozygous and heterozygous sorry please? sorry the difference between homozygous and heterozygous yes homozygous means both the alleles are same when both alleles of a particular gene are identical we call it homozygous and this organism we call homozygote. Okay, and when having two different alleles of a particular gene, often it contain either uh, one dominant and one recessive. And these are not uh, from the pure breed. So here also you are seeing that capital R, small r, capital P, small p, capital T, uh, uh, small t, like that. It means it's not same. One is dominant, one is recessive. That's the thing is called heterozygous. Now, I will show you one more cross with the Punnett square. That is uh, that this is uh, that 
show sometime in the past paper uh, it's uh, written it's written that uh, show the genetic cross then you can do the cross the way I have showed just now sometimes they're uh, telling you uh, show the crosses with the punitive square in that time you have to draw the way right now I'm drawing show uh, the arc cross between heterozygous heterozygous tall and a dwarf plant dwarf plant now in this crosses, our parent uh, or that F1 genotype, if I'm ask, telling you F1 uh, uh, genotype. What will be F1 genotype, girls? One is heterozygous tall, means capital T, small t, right? And you have to multiply it with a dwarf plant, means dwarf is a tell, dwarf is a <laughs> Resistive characteristics. So both the uh, uh, both the gametes, uh, both the allele will be small t. Small t. Now the gametes. Gamet. Gamet here will be capital T, small t, and here it will be small t. Just a minute. Yes, if you understand once this, it will be very easy for you. That's why it's very tough to use whiteboard here, but I'm trying otherwise it is not possible for to make you understand. Now I'll draw this to make you understand. This is our gamut. This is one gamut. This is another, this is another, and this is another. Now, I told you that I'm going to show you the punitive square. For doing this, I need to draw a box. How to do this cross? Before also we have seen. One more line from here to here. The line is not coming. Finally, it came. Okay, now the text will be look here, will be capital T, and here will be small t. Now, here again, the text this will be capital T. Again, here it will be capital T. No, this is small t, right? No, this is yes. small t, and this also it will be. Uh, wait, so, this will be small t. Now, look, this is capital T, this is a small t. So, here it will be capital T, capital T, capital t small t, and what is the uh, that uh, phenotype? Girls, tall, right? Tall. Tall. Yes. And if I'm going this side, here it will be small t, small t. Here. So uh, you understood this how to draw this Panetti square. This is very. Uh, I was really thinking how to make you understand. This is dwarf, right? Dwarf. Dwarf. Now, if you understand this, this I just 
I don't know, I need the eraser, otherwise it will not go. Everything has gone, see? Anyway, I'll write again to make you understand. This is small t. So here it will be capital T, small t, and again here, small t, small t. Now, this here will be tall, and here will be dwarf. Now, if you understand this, I will go to the second one. So see here, small t, small t. Again, capital T, small t. Yes. Capital T, small t. And here will be small t. Small t, small t. And the phenotype will be tall. And here will be dwarf. Clear. Now, if you are thinking the ratio, is it 50-50% girls? Yes, miss. So this is the planet square. Girls, this is the way you can uh, that show me the crosses. Now, I will give you two crosses as your homework. You can send me this, uh, that question uh, personally. Uh, you will draw the crosses the way you want. Normal crosses or planet square. Just uh, that uh, give me the feedback that you can understand. So all of you, please write this two question. I'm giving you this homework. Uh, I'll give you the link again. Uh, tomorrow, there will be uh, one oral test for this chapter. So first question, show a cross between pure black. Pure black, pure black, this is capital B, capital B, mm, pure black guinea pig, pure black guinea pig and pure white pure white guinea pig. So this is first question and second question is show a cross between the of F1 generation. Okay. And third one show show a cross here will be cross show a cross between between heterozygous b small b heterozygous and homozygous Homojaicus recessive. Oh. Who is this? Homojaicus recessive. Afnan. No, miss. I don't yawn. Ah, show a cross between heterozygous and homojaicus recessive unity. Now, girls, these three crosses, and one of the crosses, you will show me the planet square rest up to you the way i gave you the order in my uh, that uh, worksheet you will follow that order like uh, you will first write the parents parental phenotype parental genotype huh? uh, like uh, parents male and female 
pure black guinea pig, pure white guinea pig, capital B, small b, then you will make the gametes, you will do the F1 genotype, then F1 phenotype, huh, like that you have to. These three questions are your homework. All of you, did you write? Yes. Ma okay, Miss, about the second one, can you explain? This is the cross between the guinea pig of F1 generation, means the first one, you will get all the heterozygous, right? Okay. Capital B, small b. So this F1 generation, two guinea pig, you have to pick. It means two heterozygous of a spring you will, you will cross. Actually, girls, this three here, you will get 100% heterozygous. Here, you will get three to one ratio. And here, you will get one to one ratio. This is the main thing in the genetics of grade nine. If you understand these three questions, okay, your genetics, uh, that cross will be clear. And there are two types of cross, and I have showed you today. Clear, girls? Yes, ma'am. Uh, now, uh, I want to uh, start codominance. Uh, girls, codominance means when both the alleles of a gene produces an effect in the phenotype, neither is dominant to the other, these alleles are said to be codominant. Suppose both are powerful, right? No one wants to uh, that. Uh, 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 stop to show their power. So if both are powerful, so their offspring shows a different color, right? Uh, red color and the white color. Both wants to show their effect on the phenotype of their offspring. So the offspring become pink flower, different characteristics. So this is called codominance. So if both the alleles of a gene produces an effect in the phenotype that is neither is dominant to the other, then the alleles are said to be codominant. And this codominant, I will explain with the flower diagram and also I will give you the blood group. This I'm going to explain. Now, girls, always remember codominant organisms are always showing with the capital letter. Here you have seen that uh, uh, pure breed uh, recessive one is showing the small letter, but the codominance always. It shows the capital letter. Or it's both the, you know, that genotype will be capital letter. I'll show you one diagram. Here, this is, look at this picture. Describe the codominance with a genetic diagram. I have uh, chosen here, I gave you one red and white flower. Both are codominant. Look, I use capital letter. Look, this capital R, capital R, small r, smaller. And look at the cross. All the F1 of the springs are pink. So it gives you 100% pink flower. And the genotypic ratio is 100% heterozygous pink. Clear, girls? No, miss, but why is it pink? Why is it red? Because red and white both shows their characteristics to the phenotype. So of the spring gets a different characteristics, neither red, neither white. They become pink, mixture of red and white. Because oh. both are dominant. No one is recessive, right? Okay. Both, yeah, both are dominant, both are powerful. Both are showing their characteristics to the offspring. So offspring is becoming the mixture of this two. So, will they ask about the color like in the questions? Of yes, the yes. Red color, white color. When this 50% red and 50% white is coming in heterozygous organism, it becomes pink color. Mixture of red and white. And you know, if uh, the color also, if you're mixing red and white 50-50, it will give you the pink color only, right? Both are powerful, right? Now I want to show you one more cross. And the same thing, can you be able to make the, this cross with, uh, uh, like instead of this, if you are, I'll show you uh, that uh, one more. I need the white piece. Ah, I need whiteboard okay i'll show you the whiteboard so the same thing if you are uh girls uh, we have one more minute i think i can start this uh, session again so that i'll explain this codominance again with this because i will not be able to finish this within one minute now see i have showed you the genetic process of inheritance i told you about the how homozygous dominant and homozygous resistive flowers are crossing they will give you 100 percent heterozygous uh, that red flower, when you are crossing between two uh, heterozygous red flower, you will get three to one ratio. 
uh, three red flower, uh, one white flower, 75% red, 25% white. And whenever you are crossing this uh, one heterozygous red flower and one homozygous white flower, you will be getting one is to one ratio. Okay, girls. So this is our uh, first session. I will end this meeting and I will give you the link again. Okay, just wait, okay. don't go. Connect with me again, okay, girls, because 52 seconds left. Okay. Yes, girls, we have started our second session. Uh, now I'm going to show you the process again. Uh, that look at this picture now. See, heterozygous black mean, homozygous brown mean by hearing this characteristics and look at the genotype capital B capital B means this is the dominant characteristics small b small b this is the recipe characteristics look at their gamut and look f1 generation all become heterozygous clear girls understood because the homozygous is present okay fine because dominant characteristics are present here look at this one Whenever you are crossing two heterozygous, look at this, capital B, small b, capital B, small b. And look, the four of a spring, one is, look, capital B, capital B, one is capital B, small b, capital B, small b, small b, small b. Here, can we say the three to one ratio, three black mouse and one brown, right? Even though their parents are not brown. But the parents are containing this receptive characteristics. So this parent, 25% uh, of the spring showing their brown characteristics, which is completely different than their parents. That's why we are always telling that some characteristics are in the parents, but it was not expressed due to the presence of the dominant allele. If the receptive characteristics come, so the brown color, the rat, look at this mouse, the brown color. So the three black and one, brown so the ratio will be 75 percent black 25 percent brown understood this picture then miss why is it like a when yes. the male homozygous is present they look like the male here is the not a male and female girls look at the crosses hmm, look at the crosses if the male is containing uh, that heterozygous female also heterozygous the the genetic cross will give you the three to one ratio. Always. Now uh, I'll show you. Look at this blood group. Uh, now, uh, girls, I gave you the notes for this blood group. Huh, I'll show you, but look at this Punnett square. Blood group A, it could be homozygous, capital A, capital A, or heterozygous, capital A or O. So this one, before uh, that, uh, I need to show you one more thing. Just a minute. Instead of this, I want to share this one. First, look this picture. Look at this picture. And here, this notes already you wrote. Look, blood group. A genotype could be homozygous or heterozygous. Look, the first one, IA, IA. This is the homozygous blood group A. IA, IO. This is this person also having blood group A, but this person is heterozygous in presence of blood allele O. Blood group B, IB, IB. This is homozygous. And blood group B could be heterozygous also, like IB, IO. Now, Look at this AB. AB is heterozygous girls. Blood group A and B, both alleles are here. And blood group O, only homozygous because this is recessive characteristics. So AB is co-dominant. Can we tell this? Girls, understood? AB is co-dominant. Blood group A, it could be homozygous or heterozygous. Blood group B, it could be homozygous, heterozygous. And blood group AB, only heterozygous. Blood group O only homozygous because they are recessive. 
Now, you understood this genotype of our blood group. Now, the question is, one male who has blood group A and he married a female who has blood group B. One of their child uh, got this blood group O. Explain this with the genetic diagram. So what did I do? Uh, blood group, uh, I showed you this genetic diagram. See, parental phenotype is blood group A, blood group B. As one of their child got blood group O, means they are not homozygous, they are heterozygous. Look, parental genotype I, A, I, O, I, B, I, O. So you have to separate this gamut and if you show the cross, you will get this. See, this child will get blood group A, B. This child would get uh, blood group A. This child will get blood group B. And this child will get blood group O. So 25% AB, 25% A, 25% B, 25% O. Means this heterozygous couple have the chances of getting 25% chances of all type of blood group child. So ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1. Understood this? Yes, yes. Now, the same thing I will show you in this another diagram okay this is this one the one i showed you before look at this same thing i'm showing you in punnett square <coughs> look same thing you understood girls look at this i a i o i b i o so this is their punnett square i a i o i b i o now punnett square they have showed the crosses so i a i o means blood group a I, B, I, O means blood group B. I, A, I, B means blood group A, B. And I, O, I, O means blood group O. So the ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1. Clear? Yes. Now uh, that uh, <coughs> if it is clear, you know that uh, in your textbook also, you will have uh, some example, uh, uh, genetic diagram. You can go through this. After my class, please read this question and the way the male and female uh, that uh, are forming. One thing always remember that these genetic crosses, if they are not mentioning how to solve it, you can do it with any crosses, no problem. Okay, girls, so just go through the diagram one more time. I have showed you many diagram here. This one I showed you, this one also, I hope you understood. And look at this diagram. See, the beginning of your life. The sperm producing cell, by the process of meiosis, it gives the sperm cell which contains 23, 23 chromosomes, half of the chromosome. Ovum producing cell, by the process of meiosis, it produces 23, only one actually develop at a time. Others are not developing, but it divides. Only one becomes the egg cell. So egg and sperm cell fertilize, form a zygote, which is 46, see, like exactly like your body cell. This 46 start dividing by mitosis, form a ball of cell called blastocyst. And this is the phase of all the organisms, the first cell, right? And this embryo embedded in the uterus well, slowly it grows up, forming different organ. And after a nine month, a certain time, the child comes to the world and grown up slowly by mitosis. This is the picture of meiosis. Look, that blue color and the red color. This is the pairing of the homologous chromosome. So look at the spindle fiber is spooling from this way. <coughs> so the arrangement of the chromosome slowly it divided again and they're forming the four gamete which is having Half of the chromosome, look at the first chromosome and the offspring chromosome number become 50% compared to the parent offspring. Four gametes are formed, it contain only half of the original number of the chromosome. And then look at this is how the replications occur. Hmm. When the chromosomes are separating, the first look at the chromosome builder. This is the DNA, uh, that, uh, uh, the chromosome, the basis. So they are copying the bases and slowly, exactly copying. Look at this copy. Original and the replica form, the chromatid. This is the way the homologous chromosomes are pairing. During mitosis time, this is the way they're separating. That's why all the cells are same. Look at this. Uh, that this is another diagram. Female and male. Muses and the, look at this ovum. Half of the chromosomes are going. 
Now this is the structure of the chromosome, you can understand, and this is the mitosis picture. So see the homologous chromosomes are pairing, look how they are copying and when they're separating exactly same copies are separating. So the number, arrangement, everything of this chromosome exactly same because you have seen this diagram, right? This is the copying and separating. So same thing happened here also. So see, this is the copying and separating are going on. So as they have copied each other, the separating time also, they will uh, have the same characteristic because DNA is same. Now girls, this is our today's lecture. Now tell me, I have showed you uh, that uh, lots of genetic crosses. I gave you three genetic crosses as your homework and I hope you will understand this now. And uh, do you know this, uh, there are four blood groups, right? A, B, A, B and O, which is controlled by this three element because blood group O is recessive for both A and B. A, B are said to be co-dominant because they're neither dominant to each other. That's why uh, the phenotype is blood group AB. See blood group A, it could be A, I, A, I, A or I, A, I, O. Hmm. Both are blood group A, but I, B, blood group AB because both are co-dominant. This is the example of co-dominance, not only flower, co-dominance we are getting to your, uh, that uh, blood group also. Now, girls, do you have any question from this chapter? I have completed my uh, chapter. Inheritance has over. What I'm going to do, I need your suggestion that after this inheritance do, we start the past paper. I think the problem is, you know, this variation. After that, we will do variation and selection. This past papers, uh, inheritance past papers are linked with variation and selection. So my suggestion after this chapter, if I could start the variation and selection, if I can finish this variation and selection, it will be easy for me to complete the past paper. And we need to solve paper six also. So after completing this chapter, shall we start past paper? Because if I start now, problem is many question answer we couldn't solve. Few question answer we can solve according to the genetics inheritance. Okay. And if I can finish this, uh, means I need one more week for this uh, variation, then it will be easy for me. You understood, girls? Yes, miss. So what you want? Shall I do after the chapter, later the first paper? At least the variation, right? After variation, after one more chapter, I want to do the first paper, not now. So I need a few more classes. Uh, so tomorrow, I want to ask you a few questions and I will ask you to show the, uh, that crosses and you will tell me the result now. And if you have any confusion regarding this chapter, you can ask me. No problem, because I okay. want, yes. Okay, now, so I want, yes, yes, Asim. Okay, so you can finish first. No, I want to ask you a few, uh, that small uh, basic question to make, uh, to make me uh, that uh, understand that you understood the lesson properly, right? Yeah, I now, understood it, yes. Alhamdulillah. Is there any, anyone, girls? No, miss. I need all my girls are uh, quiet. Nashita, Reem, Afifa, Anur, Anud, Ikra. This and hydrotic exosomal dysplasia. In yes, Nashita, could you please a bit loud? Um, sorry, miss. Yes, sure. And hydro take ectodermal dysplasia it's inactive sweat gland yeah the right? sweat gland will not work this is actually oh, not okay. in your syllabus girls don't worry you don't need to know i have given you a few examples because uh, see the problem is if i'm giving you only one example okay in your syllabus only that uh, red green color blindness others are not there hemophilia uh, previous syllabus was there so I just gave you the few names to make you understand. Now, not only red, green color blindness, there are many other diseases. This disease is actually the gene was located in the sex uh, chromosome. Okay, so the chromosome, uh, the gene which is located in the sex chromosome, if the diseases occur in that chromosome, that will pass to the offspring. Hmm. So red, green color blindness, this is a sex link uh, that uh, problem. And uh, 
uh, and hydrotic ectodermal dysplasia, inactive sweat gland. This is also a sex link uh, that a problem. Myopia. That's why you know that many parents are uh, that uh, do not have this myopia problem, but their child from the birth they are having this problem. Do you know that there is a uh, that uh, things always doctors are telling before sending your child to the school, check their eyes because if they got this genetic disorder from the birth from three years onward, they have to wear glasses. And many of you know, if you notice properly, we don't want to admit that our child will get this glasses in three years, but the real fact is this, if they get this problem from the bird, they have to start this glasses uh, that three years. My sister's son, he has this problem. Actually, my family, we have less problem, but our child all are having this problem because this genetic disorder they are getting. So her son also got this uh, genetical disorder. So what happened, you know, uh, that she noticed that uh, her son is not responding properly. So normal in their country, in Australia, uh, that if you want to admit your child, you, they will tell you that go for this checkup. So when she went to the doctor for regular che checkup and she find that her son is having severe myopia problems, starting the power like two point something. And if you're wearing glasses regularly, the power will not increase so much. It will be in tolerable range. And see, if you are that small kid, some of them don't know even that they need to wear glasses. Parents also don't know even, right? So these are all the sex link uh, that uh, uh, characteristics. And uh, this will go to your uh, that offspring from the parent to the offspring. And uh, one thing I want to ask, tell you, you know about the stem cell, right? Miss um, Reem, please Reem, I need to mute Reem. Um, yes, um, Nashita, any what questions? Does family pedigree or family pedigree? I'll show you that uh, the question from past paper. This is actually a diagram that shows the occurrence, appearance, or the phenotype of a particular gene or organism from the ancestor, like from the parents to the offspring. If the parents are homozygous, okay, the offspring, what could be the characteristics? But main thing is that three ratios I have showed you. Pedigree can be used to determine genetic trait, family, uh, the family diseases, several generation through the family, uh, that if you see the genotype of the uh, parents, you can predict the possible, by doing the possible process, what could be the problem to the offspring. And you know that uh, the pedigree uses some standard symbol like square represent male, circle represent female. That I will show you in the past paper. The relationship in a pedigree are shown is a series of lines. They will show the line, like family tree. With the line, they will show you the diagram. Horizontal line and the, means the parent and vertical line means the offspring. I will show this thing to, uh, the, to the, from the past paper. I'll explain this. And uh, thus, the way I'm sharing the whiteboard and the screen, you can understand, right? I'm writing on the whiteboard and I'm sharing with you like our classroom whiteboard, right? Yes. So yes. I don't think uh, that it will be a problem slowly uh, that you can adjust with this online classes because the situation is like that. I can't say when this problem will be overcome. We can overcome this problem. Okay. Thank you, girls. Your next classes link already is here, so please. Okay, okay. bye, ma'am. Have a great day. Have bye, a great everyone. Day. And thank you. Thank you, girls. Bye, miss. Bye.